On the lush, terraformed landscape of New Terra, the human colonists lived a life of tranquility, a stark contrast to the turbulent history of Old Earth. The settlement, a patchwork of biodomes and open fields, thrived under two moons. Children played in the meadows, their laughter carried by the wind, as the community worked in harmony with the land they'd come to call home. However, as the twin moons rose, casting their eerie light, a silent unease began to stir within the colony. Livestock went missing, machinery malfunctioned, and whispers of shadows passing through the farms under the veil of night spread amongst the settlers. The colony's leader, Captain Elena Vasquez, a decorated veteran of interstellar conflict, was the first to notice the pattern. Every incident coincided with an unusual electromagnetic signature, one that didn't match any natural phenomenon known to New Terra. Her attempts to communicate with the United Human Command met with uncharacteristic static, leaving the colony isolated and anxious. One evening, as the colony gathered for their weekly celebration of the first landing, the celebration turned to chaos. Ethereal figures, barely visible to the naked eye, descended upon them. These spectral invaders, with technology far beyond human comprehension, began their harvest, phasing settlers in and out of existence. Amidst the pandemonium, a peculiar anomaly unfolded. Pets, the faithful companions of the humans, began to act out of instinct. Dogs barked ferociously at thin air, cats hissed at empty spaces, and birds took flight, encircling their owners protectively. It was as if they could see what humans could not. The evening ended with several members of the community missing, and the once undisturbed night air filled with a heavy silence, broken only by the soft, somber whimpers of the pets. It was clear, the threat was real, and it was unlike anything humanity had faced before. They were hunted, and they didn't even know by whom, or what. Captain Vasquez, standing among her shaken people, with her steadfast German shepherd Apollo at her side, made a silent vow. They would not be victims any longer. They would learn, adapt, and fight. And as if sensing his human's resolve, Apollo let out a low, determined growl, his eyes glowing an unnatural shade in the moonlight, a harbinger of the power that was yet to be unveiled. The nights that followed were tense and sleepless for the people of Nutera. Captain Vasquez called for a community meeting, her tone resolute despite the undercurrent of fear that had seeped into the settlement. In the central dome, under the soft glow of bioluminescent plants, the settlers gathered, each accompanied by their pets, who seemed unusually vigilant. Elena addressed the crowd, her words punctuated by the steadfast presence of Apollo by her side. We've always looked to the stars for threats, she began, her voice echoing off the glass walls. But it seems that danger has cloaked itself in invisibility, slipping past our defenses. We must adapt and uncover the nature of our new enemy. The meeting turned into a brainstorming session. An engineer spoke of disrupted frequencies, a biologist of animals' heightened senses, a physicist of potential quantum invisibility. The pieces of a daunting puzzle lay scattered before them. In the following days, a transformation began. Pets, once mere companions, were now seen as the key to sensing the otherwise undetectable threat. The settlers started training with their animals honing the instincts of dogs to bark at the faintest disturbances, cats to arch their backs in the direction of the unseen, and birds to circle over spaces where the air seemed to ripple strangely. During these sessions, an astonishing event unfolded. A young girl named Sophie and her pet rabbit, Thumper, became the center of attention. Thumper, always a skittish creature, began to channel its nervous energy into a form of echolocation, sending out an audible pulse that, to the shock of onlookers, outlined a lurking alien figure, revealing it to the human eye for the first time. The revelation spread like wildfire. If pets could be trained to not only detect, but also to expose the enemy, then they could fight back. It wasn't just about defense anymore. It was about reclaiming their home and their lives. A sense of purpose ignited within the colony. Pets that were once leisure companions took on the mantle of guardians, and as each animal unearthed their hidden talents, the humans learned too, about the depth of their bonds, the strength in their unity, and the power they possessed when they stood together. The whisper of resistance began as a murmur among the settlers, but grew into a roar that echoed beyond New Terra, into the vast, listening cosmos. The hunt had begun, 
but not in the way their unseen assailants had anticipated. The morning after Thumper's extraordinary display, Nutera awoke not to a day of labor and routine, but to one of fervent preparation. The revelation of the rabbit's ability to render the alien stalkers visible had galvanized the colonists into action. In the heart of the settlement, makeshift training grounds sprung up like wildflowers after a storm. The community, once simple farmers and scientists, were now warriors in the making, with their pets by their sides as their newfound sentinels. Captain Vasquez, with her tactical acumen, took charge of organizing the training sessions. She noted how each type of pet exhibited different reactions to the invisible threat. The settlers, adapting quickly, began tailoring their defensive strategies to the strengths of their animal companions. The bond between human and pet deepened, becoming something more profound and elemental. One afternoon, as the twin moons cast a silver sheen over the colony, a deafening alarm pierced the quiet. The aliens had come again, perhaps emboldened by the lack of resistance they'd faced in previous incursions, but this time, the settlers were ready. Apollo, who had become a symbol of steadfast courage, stood by Elena's side at the forefront of the assembled defenders. The German shepherd's hackles raised, his eyes focused intently on a space beside the colony's water purifier, a space that to human eyes appeared empty. Then, without warning, Apollo lunged forward, his teeth bared. A sharp bark echoed, and a burst of light erupted from his maw. It was not merely the sound of a dog's bark, it was a resonant frequency that rippled through the air. Where the waves touched, the outline of an alien figure flickered into visibility, and for a moment, the enemy was revealed. The colonists gasped, their shock quickly giving way to a surge of adrenaline. With their pets leading the charge, they engaged the phantoms now made flesh. Cats, their eyes shining with an otherworldly luminescence, leaped and danced around the legs of the alien entities, creating a weave of light that anchored the creatures to the physical plane. Birds took flight, their screeches slicing through the air, mapping out the positions of the assailants for the humans to target. In the midst of the chaos, Elena felt a profound shift within her, and within Apollo. It was as if their spirits had entwined, their resolve merging into a force greater than the sum of its parts. Together, they were not just a captain and her dog, they were guardians of humanity, defenders of their newfound world. The skirmish ended as abruptly as it had begun. The aliens, once the hunters, retreated, their advantage lost. The humans, with their pets, had not just defended themselves. They had repelled the assault and, in doing so, had awakened to a new potential within their companions and themselves. The pets of New Terra, ordinary creatures from a distant world, had become its protectors, its sentinels. In the wake of their first successful defense against the alien predators, the colony of New Terra was abuzz with a mixture of relief and resolve. Their pets had not only detected the aliens, but had become instrumental in countering them. Now it was time to turn their defensive victory into a strategy for survival and retaliation. Under Captain Vasquez's leadership, the settlers formed the Vanguard, a dedicated group tasked with fortifying the colony and preparing for inevitable future assaults. Comprising the most attuned pets and their handlers, the Vanguard became a symbol of the colony's newfound spirit. Elena knew that passive defense would not guarantee their safety. They needed to understand their enemy, to find their weaknesses. Together with the colony scientists and strategists, she pored over every piece of data collected during the encounters. Patterns began to emerge, strategies formed. The settlers started fortifying their biodomes with materials that diffused the electromagnetic anomalies caused by the alien technology. Homes became safe havens, and communal areas were transformed into strategic defense zones. Every street and alley was mapped, every blind spot illuminated. New Terra was becoming a fortress. Pets, too, underwent specialized training. Dogs were taught to herd the community into shielded areas. Cats served as sentinels on the perimeter. Birds acted as aerial scouts. And even smaller pets like Thumper became critical in detecting breaches. It wasn't long before the alien attackers tested the colony's defenses once again. This time, however, the vanguard was ready. As the aliens phased into the biodome, they found not frightened victims, but a wall of united resistance. The battle was fierce and chaotic, with the aliens trying to adapt to the humans' unpredictability. But for every new tactic the aliens employed, the pets countered with instinctive cunning, 
their enhanced abilities cutting through the enemy's invisibility. A small squad of humans and their pets, led by Elena and Apollo, ventured beyond the colony's perimeter, targeting the alien's temporary encampment discovered by the colony's scouts. It was a daring move, one that could turn the tide of the conflict. The skirmish was swift and decisive. The aliens, caught off guard by the brazen offensive and the fierce protection offered by the pets, retreated in disarray, leaving behind valuable technology for the humans to analyze. This victory was more than just a successful defense. It was a statement. The people of New Terra were no longer prey, but a force to be reckoned with. And as the Twin Moons witnessed the retreat of the alien specters, the vanguard of New Terra, with their pets at their side, stood tall among the stars. The successful counteroffensive against the alien aggressors rippled far beyond the borders of New Terra. As the settlers dissected the abandoned technology of their would-be conquerors, they discovered a communication array, complex, yet surprisingly compatible with human tech. Working tirelessly, the tech teams repurposed the alien device, turning it into a beacon. It was a gamble, but if there were other human settlements experiencing the same plight, they needed to know they weren't alone. The beacon burst to life, sending a message streaking across the cosmos. New Terra stands. You are not alone. The response was more immediate and overwhelming than anyone could have hoped. Signals flared up across the quadrant, some of faint hope, others of desperate struggle, but all human, all fighting the same shadowed enemy. With each exchange, the story of New Terra's defiance and the pivotal role of their pets spread like wildfire. Tales of Apollo's howling radiance and Thumper's seismic pulses were met with awe and wonder. Colonists across the galaxy began to look at their pets not as mere companions, but as potential saviors. As the movement grew, a network of resistance began to form. A chain of isolated colonies became a connected front, sharing knowledge, strategies, and tales of their own pets' emerging abilities. A dog on the mining colony of Ferris could sense the vibrations of the alien's approach. A parrot on the ocean world of Azura mimicked the frequency that disrupted the enemy's stealth fields. Each pet had a unique gift, and each gift was another ray of hope against the darkness. In the midst of this galactic awakening, a cryptic signal punctuated the chatter, a signal not from human nor alien, but something else. It originated from the Aegis system, a place rumored to be home to an ancient, advanced race, the Agorans. The message was an invitation and a warning. It spoke of an alliance, of shared knowledge, and of the great silence, the Agorans' term for the encroaching enemy. It hinted at the true nature of the conflict, of stakes far greater than any one world, and the role humanity could play in it. Captain Vasquez knew the next step was fraught with danger. A meeting with the Egorans could be a pivotal moment for humanity's place in the cosmos. But it was a risk they had to take. For the sake of New Terra and all human life, they would reach out to these unknown benefactors. And as the last of the alien technology on New Terra was dismantled, the beacon that had called out to the stars was repurposed once more. A new message was crafted, not a distress call, but a call to arms, a call of unity. The vanguard with their sentinel pets stood ready to journey into the unknown, carrying with them the indomitable spirit of Nutera, a spirit that was ready to echo across the stars. The beacon's call that surged from Nutera had stirred the cosmic waters, reaching distant allies who had remained hidden in the shadows. As the colonies prepared for their defense, a new chapter began with the arrival of the Egerans, who emerged from the silence of space with their sleek silver vessels breaking through the orbit of Nutera. The Egerans were nothing like humanity had anticipated. Their forms were ethereal, their presence both calming and commanding. They spoke not with words but with thoughts, a telepathic communication that resonated with both humans and pets. Their message was clear. The enemy was not just a predator, but a scourge of the cosmos one they had combated in secrecy for centuries. Captain Vasquez, appointed as the voice of humanity, led a delegation to meet with the Egerans aboard their flagship, a vessel that seemed alive, its walls pulsing with a soft light. Apollo, stalwart as ever, accompanied her, his senses alert to this new, alien environment. The Egorans shared their knowledge of the invaders, known as the Phantoms, beings of energy and malice that consumed life to fuel their existence. They had thought humanity too primitive to join the fight, but the tales of the pet's bravery 
and their shared bond with humans had intrigued them. In the humans' fight, the Igorin saw a new hope. An alliance was forged in the sterile light of the Agoran vessel. Technology was exchanged. The Agorans offered shields to render the phantoms visible, while humans shared their pets' training techniques. The resistance had become an interstellar coalition, one bound by a mutual desire for peace. The Agorans proposed a plan to strike at the heart of the Phantom Fleet. A coordinated effort across multiple fronts would stretch the Phantoms thin, weaken their forces, and ultimately lead to a decisive blow against their stronghold. As the Igoran ships dispersed to share this strategy with the other colonies, New Terra became a beacon of unity. Training camps turned into war councils, as human and Igoran strategists mapped out the assault. Pets once the underdogs of the universe, were now at the forefront of a galactic battle plan. News of the impending offensive spread through the colonies, bolstering spirits and strengthening resolve. From every corner of human space, ships began to rally, forming a fleet that dwarfed any single world's navy. They were a patchwork armada, a symbol of solidarity, and at the center flew the flag of Nutera, with a sigil of a human and pet side by side. As the twin moons of Nutera witnessed the gathering of forces, the people of the colony understood that they were no longer isolated settlers, but key players in a cosmic resistance. With their pets by their sides, they prepared to take their place in the history of the galaxy, not as victims, but as warriors of the light, ready to stand with their new allies against the darkness of the phantoms. The Coalition's Armada, a mosaic of human and eager in vessels, pierced the velvet darkness of space, bound for the Andromeda Sector, the heart of the phantom stronghold. Within the silence of the void, a storm brewed, a convergence of hope and valor against the impending shadow. Captain Vasquez stood on the bridge of the lead ship, the Harbinger, with Apollo at her side. The bond between them, strengthened by battles fought and won, was now a beacon for all those who followed into the fray. The Agoran emissary, Lyra, a being of light and thought, projected encouragement and strategy, intertwining alien intellect with human courage. The initial phase of the battle unfolded with precision, a testament to the unity and planning of the Allied forces. Agarin shields rendered the phantom attackers visible, while human-engineered weapons, inspired by the pets' abilities, targeted the exposed enemies. The pets themselves, now celebrated as sentinels, were instrumental in guiding and protecting their companions, their senses sharp and attuned to the slightest hint of danger. But the phantoms were not idle. They adapted, their forms shimmering into visibility as they countered with assaults of their own, their energy weapons tearing through the void toward the Allied fleet. It was then, amidst the chaos of battle, that the true extent of the pet's evolution became apparent. Dogs, cats, birds, and creatures of all kinds began to emit a harmonious frequency, a resonant shield that diffused the phantom's attacks. It was as if the very essence of the bond between humans and their pets had become a weapon against the darkness. The turning point came when Apollo, leading a squadron of sentinel pets, breached the perimeter of the phantom flagship. With each bark, each squawk, each roar, the pets unveiled the hidden core of the enemy's power, a nexus of energy that fed their existence. Captain Vasquez, alongside a unit of human and eager and warriors, fought their way to Apollo's side. The battle raged, a maelstrom of light and shadow, until at last, they stood before the Nexus. Lyra, merging her essence with the collective force of the Sentinels, channeled a pulse of pure unified intent. The pets, their loyalty and love amplified by the Igorin's power, echoed this pulse, directing it into the heart of the Nexus. With a blinding flash, the pulse shattered the nexus, the explosion of light cascading through the phantom fleet, their forms dissolving into nothingness as their source of power was obliterated. Silence fell over Andromeda. The battle won, but at a great cost. The armada, though victorious, mourned the loss of many. Yet, amidst the grief, there was a profound sense of accomplishment. The phantoms, a scourge that had haunted the stars, were no more. The Allied forces returned to New Terra heroes of a battle that would be etched in the annals of the cosmos. The victory was not just a testament to their strength and courage, but to the unprecedented unity among different beings and the extraordinary role played by the most unlikely of heroes. 
the pets of humanity, now celebrated across galaxies as the sentinels of the cosmos. As the dust settled on the ruins of the Phantom Nexus, the Allied forces gathered in the shadow of their monumental victory. The battleground, once a beacon of the Phantom's might, now stood as a testament to their downfall. Captain Vasquez, her eyes reflecting the starlight of a thousand worlds, surveyed the aftermath with a heavy heart. Each star represented a life, a story that had intertwined with the fate of the universe. The victory at Andromeda was not just a military triumph, it was the dawn of a new era. The alliance between humans and Agarans, fortified in the heat of battle, had proven that unity in diversity was the cosmos's greatest strength. But as the celebrations began, a somber mood enveloped the Harbinger. The cost of freedom was remembered, a silent tribute to those who had fallen. Amidst the debris, Apollo nudged his companion, his eyes gleaming with a wisdom beyond his earthly origins. In his gaze, Elena saw not just the dog she had come to love, but a guardian whose spirit had been forged in the crucible of cosmic war. Together, they had faced the abyss, and together, they had prevailed. The return to New Terra was a journey of reflection. The colony, once a fledgling settlement on the edge of known space, had become a symbol of hope, a beacon for all who sought refuge from the darkness. As the Harbinger entered orbit, the planet gleamed below, a jewel in the night, its lights a mirror to the stars above. The hero's welcome was beyond anything the settlers had imagined. Stories of the battle, of the pet's bravery, and the unity it inspired, had spread across the galaxy, turning New Terra into a pilgrimage site for those seeking to understand the power of the bond between species. In the days that followed, a council was formed, comprising representatives from human colonies, Egorans, and other allied races. The council's first decree was to establish a memorial on New Terra, not just for those lost in the battle against the phantoms, but as a reminder of the unity that had saved the cosmos. Elena stood before the memorial, Apollo by her side as the names of the fallen were etched into the stone. It was a moment of profound sorrow and immense pride. They had turned the tide, not through superior firepower or strategy, but through the strength of their bonds, the irreplaceable connection between humans and their pets, and the alliance with the Agorans. As the ceremony came to a close, the horizon began to glow with the first light of dawn. The sun rising over New Terra bathed the memorial in a warm golden light, its rays a physical manifestation of hope. And in that light, Elena saw not the end of their journey, but the beginning of a new chapter. The fall of the phantoms was not just the end of a threat, but the start of a legacy. A legacy of unity, of bridges built between worlds and hearts, and of the undeniable truth that in the vast, often cold universe, the warmth of companionship, loyalty, and love was the most powerful force of all. The story of New Terra and its defenders would be told for generations, a saga of how the hunted became heroes, and how their pets, once simple companions, became the legends that guided the cosmos to dawn. In the wake of victory, New Terra transformed. No longer a mere outpost on the fringes of human space, it became a living symbol of resilience and unity. The memorial on its surface, commemorating the bravery and sacrifice of those who had fallen, stood as a beacon of hope for the future. The dawn after the memorial ceremony broke with a promise of new beginnings. The alliance formed in the crucible of war had given birth to the Galactic Sentinels, a coalition dedicated to guarding the peace and prosperity of the cosmos against any who dared threaten it. Captain Vasquez, with Apollo ever at her side, found herself at the helm of this new endeavor. The Council, representing a myriad of worlds and species, had unanimously elected her as the first Guardian Commander. It was a role she accepted with humility and determination, for the challenges ahead were as vast as the stars themselves. The Galactic Sentinels, comprising fleets and ground forces from across the Alliance, began the monumental task of reconstruction and defense. New Terra served as their headquarters, its fields and cities bustling with activity as diplomats, soldiers, and citizens of countless worlds mingled. The pets, heroes of the conflict, were honored as the Sentinels' mascots, their likenesses adorning banners and ships alike. Elena and Apollo, alongside their eager and allies, worked tirelessly to forge a future where no world would have to face the darkness alone. They established outposts along the fringes of known space, 
sent exploratory missions into uncharted territories, and created a network of early warning systems capable of detecting threats from beyond the void. The story of humanity's rise, of pets that became guardians, and of allies found in the least expected places, spread far and wide. Delegations from distant systems, inspired by the tales of New Terra's stand against the Phantoms, traveled across the galaxy to join the Sentinel's cause. In this new era, the galaxy thrived. Trade routes reopened, cultures intermingled, and technology advanced at a pace never before seen. The Sentinels, under Elena's leadership, became not just protectors but also beacons of diplomacy and cooperation. As the years passed, the scars of the past slowly healed. The memorial on New Terra grew into a place of pilgrimage, a reminder of the cost of peace and the value of unity. And at its heart stood the statues of the Sentinels, both human and pet, gazing eternally into the stars, guardians of the future they had secured. The dawn of the Galactic Sentinels marked the beginning of a golden age. Under their watchful eyes, the galaxy flourished, a testament to the enduring spirit of those who refused to be divided. In every challenge they faced, in every shadow that loomed, they stood united, a diverse family bound by a shared purpose. And through it all, Captain Vasquez and Apollo remained at the forefront, a human and her pet, who together had inspired a galaxy to stand as one. Their legacy would echo through the ages, a story of how the smallest of creatures and the bravest of hearts could become the most powerful weapon in the cosmos.